The other game that I've played this month, uh, it's not quite as finger on the pulse as we have been achieving uh, remarkably, uh, but it's still a very recent release that has captured the adulation of the internet. And that is the under the sea set crustacean sensation 3D platforming souls like <laughs> another crab's treasure. That is another brand new game. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty. Yeah, uh, yeah they came out like less than a month ago, I swear. It may, yeah, prob- probably. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. I, I felt like I'd I put off getting it because I didn't get it straight away because I was yeah. like, um, you know, uh, especially with indie games, I, I think, you know, I, I'm, I'm very aware that obviously extensive playtesting is never, uh, isn't usually an option for indie games. So I, I always like to give indie games just a little bit of a, a buffer when, yeah. they, uh, when they release something, especially if it looks like something I'm really going to enjoy because I don't want to go into something and then be disappointed. That's fair enough. Nobody wants that. Fair enough. This is the second game from indie studio Agro Crab, uh, following a 3D action roguelike set in the world of office work uh, called Going Under, which uh, I, d- I did give a bit of a I did give a bit of a a, a go at, um, and uh, it really got me thinking about actually how few 3D roguelikes there are. And certainly fewer that I've enjoyed. Yeah. Because I've tried to play a few. There was a... I can't remember what it was called. It was something about... Oh, I don't know. You're basically Aladdin. You're like a thief in... Uh, something... Oh, City of... Isn't it City of Clockwork? Or something like no, that? No, it's not that. Uh, oh. I know, me, um, I know what you're talking about. Let's work this out. Hang on. City, yeah. oh. Nintendo Life gave it a 9 out of 10. Um, hang on. Oh, obviously, oh, hang on. Um, first person roguelike. Um, Prince of Persia. No, not Prince of Persia. Um, thief. Uh, thief of Persia. Ah. City of Brass. That's it. That's it. <sighs> Got it. Um... There was, it- there was like a first person roguelike that I played on the Switch called City of Bras, which was disappointing. <laughs> Do that uh, again. <laughs> <laughs> Go back. <laughs> oh, that was pretty funny. It was, but if no one knows we've just spent all this time Googling it, it's not going to have any, any sort of joke, is it? It's just going to sound like you think it's called City of Bras. <laughs> um, so th- there was a first person... There's a 3D first person roguelike game that I played on the Switch called City of Brass, which was oh, okay. like an action thiefy set in some miscellaneous Arabian <laughs> uh, setting. And yeah, I, I, I don't know what it is about maybe the pacing of a game of a roguelike where I sort of need a bit more readability of where I am or things need to be at a certain level of simplicity so that you can more easily keep track of them you know yeah. it's it's why Returnal was was so spectacular because I've no idea how it managed to make essentially a triple A uh, game uh, as a roguelike and it and it work um anyway I'm not going to put any of that in uh because I'm not talking about that game um I'm not even going to mention that it's their the second game it's a whole deleted scene <laughs> for no one right <laughs> so I think another crab treasure's main attraction is probably its presentation, this yeah. this idea of being a little hermit crab without a shell. You're exploring an incredibly realised, colourful, anthropomorphised underwater world filled with eccentric characters, huge, expansive 3D environments populated with crafty enemies and big, gnarly bosses. It's, it's absolutely dripping in charm, thanks to the brilliance of its design and the wittiness of its writing. It's a lot of fun, and you've always got a smile on your face when you're discovering all this world has to offer sort of tinged with this really, really good sort of eco-friendly sentiment as well. Uh, so like the currency that you harvest in the game from enemies are microplastics that you recover from them. Oh, uh, And then nice. it's like the pieces of treasure that you discover and earn uh, are various pieces of rubbish and junk. And uh, you'll find all of like the underwater buildings and the towns and the cities and the castles and the structures they're all basically made of rubbish that has been dumped in the ocean. It's 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 a nice idea thinking that the underwater life actually has a purpose for all this rubbish that we've dumped on them. Yeah, but it, yeah. it is also made me realise going, my God, there probably is. There's going to be so much shit down there 
that is just it doesn't look as nice as this because it's not been made into a town or a city because no, it's just a fucking pile of it's just bills. killing them <laughs> yeah yeah but your main task in the game apart from getting your home back is to also find out the source of uh the pollution uh make your underwater world a better place so in another crab's treasure you you play as this lovely little naive hermit crab called krill uh, armed only with a small fork to use as a sword <laughs> and your your lovely conch shell home is robbed from you uh, right at the outset by a shark oh meaning uh, it's actually one of those plastic grabber sharks that you get in the zoo is it yeah oh brilliant which is yeah and i i can't i don't know whether or not there was somebody can contr- i yeah that's i need to unpick some of the law around that and how that works in this world but anyway um uh so you don't have a shell it leaves you utterly defenseless until you start to utilize the litter that you find scattered around the ocean floor maybe you pick up an abandoned um drinks can to use as a shell or a tennis ball or a coconut or a shot glass or a salt shaker or one of any number of things that number of things by the way is 69 there are 69 different <laughs> shells to find at the game did you get the brilliant uh, no, I haven't yet. Oh. I'll come on to that. Get back on it. Uh, the brilliance of these makeshift shells, aside from obviously being used as armour and uh, being able to hide inside them to defend yourself, uh, they all come with a, a fitting power-up then to use in battle. So if you're wearing a soda can, you can spit some fizzy bubbles at an enemy. Or like your tennis ball, uh, you can be used as like a, a rollout device. So you, you mm. go up inside it and then you batter the enemy. Or if you find a party popper, uh, you, you can just blast confetti at an enemy to stun them. <laughs> uh, or then if you find something uh, to wear that's potentially edible, like a banana peel or a California sushi roll, uh, if you're wearing that, then the ability is uh, simply called munch. And then you can just eat the shell uh, and recover some health. <laughs> that's pretty it's just, cute as well. Yeah, it's really, really great design. It's always fun. And it keeps you wanting to experiment with using different shells that you find. and it even makes you like excited when your current shell eventually breaks and you need to seek out something else to use. It, it's, it's reminded me a, a fair bit of like Tears of the Kingdom in, in, in that way, where it's actually the breakability of stuff makes you uh, more creative, more curious because you want to see, uh, you know, you want to see what else the game can do. Yeah. Uh, and speaking of which, there are actually, th- there's even more use for the shells in the game because you can fuse them to your fork sword to uh, enhance the power of your standard attacks. And again, these are these are breakable as well. So it keeps your, you know, your weapon's going to be powered up for <laughs> a fair bit. Uh, and then, you know, uh, and then it will break. But it, it keeps you experimenting with, with different things as you play through the game. It's, it's really, really fun. Uh, and obviously, like, really varied as well. The enemies in Another Crab's Treasure are all really well designed. Uh, lots of different enemy types and attack types to learn how to manage and combat. The bosses are fittingly enormous and powerful, as you would expect from a Souls-like game. They're brilliantly designed, obviously really, really hard, uh, but you always get really cool abilities and rewards for besting them, including like a whole host of Metroidvania-style movement abilities, which will keep you pouring over every inch of the map and revisiting areas to scour for secrets traversal and exploration is then fortunately really really fun as well and it's it's surprisingly uh it's it's surprisingly well realized and varied too for a souls like game it sort of reminded me of blue fire on that front yeah, which was yeah. absolutely as much a 3d platformer <clears throat> as that is you know a, an action game in a souls like as well another crab's treasure probably isn't quite on the same level of platforming as blue fire but but there is so much platforming uh you get like a, a grapple hook to, uh, for vertical traversal you've got a great sort of flutter jump which is, isn't actually a flutter jump it's just uh swimming because you're underwater <laughs> uh, <laughs> um uh, there's some there's some some really uh tricky parts of, of platforming and loads of secrets hidden at the end of uh lots of platforming gauntlets it's just it's brilliant it's brilliant it's not a huge game either uh i completed it in about 14 hours i rolled the credits and then there's still a fair few things for me to find uh which i'll certainly go back into and try and find everything uh, especially now that they've patched in some improvements to the map system uh in the game which mm, i, I like literally, 
I, I had I had written a bit of a gripe about the map in the game, and then uh, literally, I think yesterday, I read about the patch uh, that has basically fixed all my frustrations with it. So, <laughs> um, uh, so it's it's short and sweet. It doesn't outstay its welcome, and I I could, would definitely have played it for longer if there was more. So if they do release, hang on, I'll, I'll just skipped out a whole thing. Um, so it's 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 short and sweet. It doesn't outstay its welcome. Uh, I, I you know I, I definitely would have played more if there was more in there. Uh, so it's it's you know it's probably pitched really really well. Yeah, it is a difficult game as you would expect from a Souls like, but they have basically handed over full control of how difficult the game is to the player. So you can play on the default hard settings or turn it down to easier or a more simple story setting too. But you can also then fine tune the settings if you want to customize it even more, uh, tweaking, you know, enemy damage, uh, health, um, whether or not you lose your currency when you die or, you know, you drop your currency. Or if you're really struggling, uh, you can even choose to swap out your shell for a gun. <laughs> uh, which uh, you can then uh, kill any enemy in one shot. Yeah. And I did have a bit of a go at this once I beat in the game. It's really silly. It's great fun. Uh, but it's it's really nice uh, to have a way in for players of any ability or predilection to experience a Souls-like game. Uh, but yeah, another Crab's Treasure. Looks great. Sounds great. Uh, it's got some lovely music in there too. It plays great. It is just a real treat of a game. I hope they make DLC or a sequel because I want more crab. 